नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी इज लाइव फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम दिस इज अ सोशल साइंस सब्जेक्ट वेर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक वर्किंग ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन पार्ट टू well what are these institutions how many types of institutions are there in a country and uh, what is their respective work this is what we are going to discuss in this program and uh, if you have any questions regarding this program this topic then please call us on our number which is 8800440559 if you want to email us your questions the email id would be dth.class9 @ciet and dot nic dot in this is for all the class 9 students and we have an expert in our studio and she'll be talking about working of institutions so let me introduce her to all of you she is dr wan thang pui khobung welcome ma'am thank you so ma'am very is, good evening yes good evening to you too ma'am yes ma'am is from department of education and social sciences nie ncert new delhi so let's ask her that what is it that we are going to understand in this program and also ma'am before beginning the second part of this topic could you yes. please uh, tell us very briefly that what did we learn understood in the first part okay uh, thank you tanvi um two weeks ago we had discussed on this topic uh, part one of this topic and as the tanvi has mentioned that this is a part of class 9 uh, political science textbook that is democratic rights and uh when the last session we had discussed how a very important decisions in you know um in a democratic society uh, is taken and the different processes and the different institutions who are involved in those major decision making process we had discussed that one and in that process also we had identified the different political institutions who were involved in uh taking decision measure uh decision uh in society because as you see in a democratic society uh, decision is not taken by a single institution or by a single individual it is a long process and there are so many issues and there are so many ele many elements involved in this process and then a lot of consultation it takes place and uh in this aspect democratic society it needs a lot of institutions and three major institution that we had um identified last time who had involved in the process of taking decision relating to that obc resolution uh, in the early 1990s that we had discussed and then based on that the different institutions that we had already identified last time um who were involved in the process of that uh, decision making those this is uh, those institutions we will try to understand better today uh, from a larger perspective absolutely so um ma'am you have made a presentation uh, can we have a look at it and understand better with the help of the slides okay now um as i had already mentioned in uh, any country especially in a democratic country three major institutions plays a very important role and these three major institutions are legislature executive and judiciary um basically legislature they are involved in law making uh, the name also suggests that one and executive they are involved in taking decisions they take day to day decisions and they are also involved in implementing those decisions and laws uh, of the country and then judiciary is another important branch uh, another important institutions uh, they are an organized body who are responsible for adjudication of this for this that means in terms of settlement of disputes and they also provide mechanism for bringing to for resolving different kind of uh, issues different kinds of disputes in the society because you see human society there are always interesting conflict in human society because resources that is available in human society it is always you know uh, fought upon it is always um, in between human being so in the course of utilization and this allocations of resources not just material resources even id also 
judiciaries, they play a very important role. In fact, these three institutions that is you know, shown on this slide, they play a, a very important role to such an extent that you know the whole idea or the whole ideal of democracy, they are sustaining. These, the working of these in three, three institutions are sustaining the whole idea of democracy and also they protect the rights of the citizens and they also provide a space for participation by different sections of people in the society. So uh, the first institutions that uh, we are going to discuss here, as you see, it is legislature. Now, as I had already mentioned, in democratic society or in a country where uh, democracy is prevalent and where democracy as a form of government and as a way of life is accepted, legislature it plays a very important role. Now, if we are to ask what is legislature, legislature simply means those body or those uh, group of people who are representing the general public and on their behalf, they exercise political authority. So in democracy, especially in this contemporary society, democracy is functioning in direct way, not in a direct manner. Because maybe because of the increase of population and because of you know uh, the uh, increasing want of uh, diverse people in human society, as you see, human society it is mostly it is always uh, composed of a diverse you know uh, element of people in the society. So uh, in today's society, you will see that democracy it is functioning indirectly, not directly. A direct uh, democracy it is found only in some parts of the world. Only Switzerland is an exception who is still practicing a, some sort of you know, direct democracy. Otherwise, most democratic countries, they practice democracy in an indirect way uh, through their elected representatives. So when we talk about legislature, legislature is a collection of body that exercise political authority on behalf of the people. And in India, coming to India, we have this legislature by the name of parliament at the national level, and we have uh, this legislature, this lawmaking body, this representative body at the state level by the name of state uh, legislative assembly. We, it may be known by uh, this Madhya Pradesh legislative assembly, Manipur legislative assembly, known by different name. Mm -hmm. And this legislature at different level they are also known by different names in different parts of the world. It is not that like, you know, they are known by the name parliament only. Uh, it is known by different names. And in China, if you see, they are known as National People's Congress. If you go to Japan, they are called as Diet. So in that way, there are different names given uh, to uh, specify this uh, legislative body. Uh, one activity that uh, children can take up, you know, at this level is like, you know, you can find out the names of, you try to find out the names of legislature in different countries, and then uh, you can make a list of it. Uh, this, this will add to your knowledge also, and it will be interesting activity to do also. Now, uh, to make our point further, to explore how this legislature play an important role, especially in our country, let us recall the office memorandum that we had discussed in the last uh, uh, session. Uh, if you recall that office memorandum, uh, there were so many, you know, uh, legislative body that were involved in that. Uh, in the you know culmination or in the coming up of that office memorandum, uh, one prominent uh, institution that was involved was Parliament. The Parliament was mentioned like in uh, two three places uh, in relation with that office memorandum that we had discussed in the first session. First was that uh, it mentioned the discussion of this office memorandum or uh, previously Mandal Commission. Uh, it was discussed first in the um, parliament and also the president as one important institution had also announced uh, when he was opening the session that uh, it is the 
uh, effort of the government that they are trying to come up with these kind of you know uh, policy decisions and also the prime minister during that time he had uh, inform the parliament about the decisions of the cabinet so in this way this uh, parliament is one of the most important institution at the national level in our country it involves in the decision making process even in relation with that of his memorandum that we had discussed in the first session also now having said that i just want to it may be you know a point that is reaffirming whatever we had discussed in the last session I just want to highlight a few points here why this uh, parliament is so important, especially in a democratic country. The first one is, you know, uh, the basic uh, authority or the basic duty or the obligation of parliament is uh, functioning as a final authority for making laws. Now, legislature across the world, they function as a body of uh, making law. They make a law, they bring in a new law, they change the existing law, and they can replace even the existing law with a new one. So there is a certain, you know, constitutionally recognized process of uh, bringing changes to the law, which are already existing, and bringing a new law into uh, any political system. Okay. So parliament, or for that matter, I'm just using parliament here to signify legislature. If you are talking about in the context of Japan, maybe you will be using the term diet. If you are talking in the context of USA, maybe you will be using the term Congress. But since we are talking in the context of our country, I'm just using the institution that we have at national level for lawmaking. Now, the second important point that I would like to stress here on the need of parliament is to exercise control over those who run the government. Now, how does parliament exercise control uh, those who run the government? Now, if you, uh, we will be discussing in the, you know, uh, in the uh, coming slides also, the composition of the parliament and all. Here, I, just, I would like to stress that, you know, uh, government in a democratic system of government, uh, government of the day, it is run by the people who are uh, commanding a majority in the house of the people, that is the Lok Sabha in the context of our country. Now, during that time, in that context, um, parliament can exercise control over who runs the government in a way that, you know, when the, go the uh, party or the majority who are running the government, who are sitting on the bench of the uh, government on the opposition side, if they lose the uh, confidence of the whole members of the parliament, parliament, majority members of the parliament, then they uh, have to step down and they have to make way for others. So in this way, parliament is exercising control over those who run the government. And also parliament is in, you know, in a major way controlling all the money that the government have in the sense that uh, most of the you know bill that is relating with money that is financial matters that is to, that is to do with any aspect of you know a financial matter it is discussed in the parliament and then uh, to what in what way you know uh, revenue money is to be raised resources is to be raised in what way it is to be spent the mobilization and res uh, utilization of resources in our country it is decided discussed and decided in the parliament itself and apart from that parliament is the highest forum for debate and discussion now in the parliament for that matter in any legislature uh, issues of public importance, issues that are affecting the welfare of the society, which are in, which are crucial for the development of the society as a whole. These are discussed, debated upon, and then only a decision it is taken. So, in this way, uh, legislature it plays a very important role in democratic society especially. Now, uh, parliament in India, uh, since we have discussed about the need of the parliament, uh, it is important for us to understand, you know, the organizational structure uh, and the composition of the parliament also in brief. It is not 
our intention here to discuss every aspect in detail. Our intention here is to highlight how institution works, especially in the context of the national government. Institution at the state level also, India has, see India has a federal system of government. We have two levels of government mm -hmm. and then the third one is also there in the form of local government but we are not taking the example of this state level government local level level government we are taking the example of parliament uh, that is the national legislature okay now parliament as you see it is composed of two th uh, two houses one is council of state and one is house of the people which we uh, know by the name of Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha and also uh, president is a part of is considered to be a part of the parliament Ma so uh, yeah like you said that uh, the president is the part of parliament can yes. we um, uh, can we know that why is he the part of parliament yes see president he is not a member right. in the parliament he does not sit in the parliament but he is considered to be a part of parliament in parliamentary system of government in presidential system of government uh, president is also you know um, he is not a part of the uh, legislature yeah. but in presidential system of government, the position that the president occupy it is quite different from the kind of you know uh, system that we have in our country. So in our country, we have parliamentary system of government uh, where this um, uh, we have a legislature which is uh, having two chambers that is which is having two uh, you know um, uh, part and then the third part it is the president while the president is considered to be a part of uh, this parliament it is a, a very interesting thing because like you know most of the time when you see the proceedings of this parliament yeah. uh, Lok Sabha or Raja Sabha you won't see the president himself sitting there yeah, yeah. but he is considered to be a part of the parliament because he, without him, without his signature, uh, the law that is passed in the parliament, it cannot be a bill that is introduced in the parliament and which are already, you know, decided by the members of parliament cannot become a law until and unless it has the sign of the president. Okay. And then like um, when uh, a new whenever like you know election uh, general election takes place and a new house is constituted that time president will be you know opening that house and he will be always be giving a speech to open the house and also the president will dissolve uh, he will prorogue that is like when the for example in in india we there are three sessions like monsoon sessions budget sessions and winter sessions so yes. when these sessions are you know uh, uh, going to uh, be finished then the president used to you know um, uh, officially close these sessions of the parliament so because of this president is considered to be a part of the parliament okay, okay. now one more question uh, yeah. we wanted to know. So there are uh, two uh, no, houses that yeah. you mentioned. One is the House of the People and the other is the Council of States. So mm. uh, can we say that one is more powerful than the other? One has got more responsibility than the other? Is that the case or both are treated equally? Um, in the case of our country, uh, both uh, the houses of the parliament do not have the same you know, power. Um, even you see in any country where there is a bicameral legislature, that is bicameral legislature is a legislature that is having uh, two parts, mm -hmm. two chambers like we have in our country. Even in US also they have, in Switzerland also they have, okay, these are all uh, countries who are also uh, following a federal setup that is having different levels of government. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, in our country, this Raja Sabha and Lok Sabha, that is the Council of State and the House of People, they do not have equal power. Uh, this one interesting fact that I just want to add here is like, um, in most of the country, as I said, you know, they will be having uh, a different set of power and either one, usually the House of People will enjoy more power than the Council of State. That is the same case with India also. So to answer your question, House of the People, it has more power. But interestingly, in Switzerland, Switzerland is also a country that is, you know, uh, uh, practicing this uh, uh, federal setup, mm -hmm. having a federal setup. They have two houses. Those two houses, they share the same power. Their power is equal. Okay. And interestingly, if you look at this uh, USA, 
America. The lower house that we call it Raja Sabha, which is um, uh, considered to be, you know, having less power in comparison with Lok Sabha. In uh, United States of America, this Senate, Senate is very powerful again, yeah. though it is the upper chamber. And Senate is considered, in fact, it is considered to be the most powerful upper chamber in the world. So, uh, coming back to uh, this uh, question, um, the, of course, the House of the People, where the representative of the people are sitting who are directly elected by the people, it is more powerful. Raja Sabha is, you know, a house where representative of the states are sitting and they are representing different states in our country. So the house of the people, uh, this is the Lok Sabha, it is more powerful. Why it is uh, more powerful or how? This Lok Sabha is exercising more power mm -hmm. than Raja Sabha. Let us just have, uh, you know, a quick uh, glance into that. Now, uh, there are three ways in which Lok Sabha is exercising more power. One is, you know, uh, if you look at the composition of these two house, Lok Sabha as a representative of people, uh, it has more members. Raja Sabha as a representative of state, it has less member. So by virtue of this numerical strength, uh, whenever there is a joint session, that is, whenever there is, a, you know, an issue uh, where they, these two houses have a conflict, they could not agree upon, then they usually call for a joint session, and in that joint session, by virtue of this numerical strength, since they are more in number, uh, this locks about their view usually prevail. So this is one way of uh, exercising more power. This is one reason why uh, Lok Sabha is exercising more power. And the second one is, um, in terms of money matter, Lok Sabha, they exercise more power. Uh, that is, um, when it is uh, a bill that is related with money, it is the Lok Sabha who has a final say. Does it Sabha, even if they don't agree with that, the content of the bill and uh, and related with that bill also, they uh, cannot, you know, withhold that bill forever. Maybe for 14 days. For 14 days only, they could withhold it. But beyond that, they cannot do anything about it. Okay. So in this uh, matter, even if they give, you know, suggestions to the Lok Sabha also, it is the uh, discretion of the Lok Sabha whether to take, to include, to incorporate that suggestions coming from Raja Sabha or not. Okay. So they exercise that kind of, you know, uh, a power. So can we say that uh, Lok Sabha is the one who takes the final decisions? Uh, see, it, it uh, will depend, okay. There are um, the subject or the issue or different subjects which are uh, important for our country. It is divided into different categories. If we are discussing this, it will take a long time. <laughs> Because, you know, subject in a federal setup, it is divided into three, you know, um, list. And then there are some lists where the union have more power. There are some lists where, you know, uh, uh, the state will have more power. And when there is any bill that is related with the state, then the uh, role of this Raja Sabha, it becomes very important again because they are the representative of the state. Okay. Okay. So okay. in so this way, like Lok Sabha exercises yes. yes, supreme power as in like a more power than the Raja Sabha. Okay. Ma'am, yeah. like you said that this will take a long time and we have got last one minute left. So uh, just one message uh, with last one message, we'll wrap up this session yes. and maybe we'll continue in the next session with the part three of working on institutions. Maybe we have to yeah. do that. So um, what have we is, uh, learned in this entire program? Just sum it up uh, in a minute. Hmm. Uh, in this program, we were just uh, quickly running into the you know, uh, importance of institution. We were highlighting the three institutions. And then in detail, we were discussing legislature in the context of this uh, national legislature in our country. And the rest of maybe we can do it later on. So uh, we were discussing like in brief uh, the institutions, why institutions is important, what are the prominent institutions in democratic countries. And then one institution
constitution legislature in the context of this national legislature we had discussed how they functioned and then why they uh, what is the organ uh, what is the organizational structure and then which uh, chamber is more powerful and then who is more powerful and also we were you know uh, taking into the example of even other countries also so that we can have a glimpse into how other countries are also having uh, this kind of institution Absolutely. and how they are functioning yes so um, this was the entire uh, brief of what we discussed in today's program I'm sure you enjoyed it this is more interesting when we'll come back in the third part of the same topic that will be very very soon till now uh, so we have discussed a lot of things in the first and the second part if you have not seen these parts then you can watch it on NCRT official that is our YouTube channel we're wrapping up this program but soon we are coming back with another program of ours and the topic would be triangles part six a maths class for all the ninth class students so stay here don't go anywhere thank you namaskar thank you